Hi guys. Yay. Um, I know this is kind of a late night so I hope that's okay. I haven't done an evening one in a while. Some people love that time. Some people hate that time. So if you can't stay awake or you can't make this, it'll always be on here for later and you can come and join later. Hey guys. Hi, Kalisha. Thanks for keeping your eyes open for me. <laughs> Yay. I mean, I figure if you guys are anything like me, you stay up late night sewing when you should be sleeping. So I'll sew with you. How's that sound? <laughs> Hi, guys. Lisa, you're going to make the Mia wallet. That's a good pattern. I like the Mia wallet. That's a fun one. Sunny Australia. Oh, Brooke, it's so cold here. <laughs> Washington. Hi, Emily. Thanks for joining. I'm a night owl too, guys. Usually I stay up till 11 or midnight. And every night I say, I'm going to go to bed early tonight. And then it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so what do you do? All right. Hi, everybody. Okay, so let's get started. We are going, so, okay, so last week my live was this cute little Harlequin pouch. I made another one, and it's going to match the tote that we're making tonight. I thought it's got to have a matching pouch to go with it. So <laughs> these are the fabrics that I'm using for the tote today. I love this floral. Of course, Hawthorne Threads. It's the canvas, and this is the Mora faux leather from Emmeline Bags that I absolutely love. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks for coming. And inside is that striped. I love it so much. Okay. <laughs> Yay. All right. So let's get going. I tried to prep as much as I could so we could get this done. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it all in one sitting. I don't like to make my life super long because I feel like not many people want to sit here forever. Hi, Kathleen. All right. Hi, June, Kelly, and Patsy. All right. So I have never sewed up this tote. I have read over the pattern, obviously. This is from, oh, I just whacked myself in the face <laughs> with my thread. Um, this is from Crafted by Leanne. And I put the link below to purchase this if you're interested in doing that. I am going to just be reading the pattern as I go. I already know I'm gonna alter it just a tiny bit um, for me, but not like big. I'm not doing big changes to it for the most part. It's the same thing. I'm just changing a couple of ways I do the interfacing and I am not doing all the pockets on the inside. She has two zipper pockets on the inside and two slip pockets. I'm just gonna do one zipper and one slip. So other than that, it's pretty much the same. Hi, Leanne. Oh, I'm glad you made it. Deborah, Angela, Angelina, sorry, Angelina. Okay. Oh, thank you, Lisa. That's very sweet. All right, guys. I'll move you in kind of right here on my lives. I try to um, watch all the comments as I go. So if I miss your comment and it's already gone past, try it. Just ask it again and I will try my best to keep an eye out for it. Okay. And as I go, I'll just go over what pieces are wet and what I interface them with. This is just the front and back main panels and it's just the faux leather. So I'm not interfacing them yet. I am going to put foam on the end. So, um, but I'm not doing any of that right now. So very simple at the beginning, you should have two front and two back. And we're just going to sew those together. Our seam allowance is three eighths throughout this whole thing. So just stick to that seam allowance and let's get going. Let me know how, I'll move you in just a little bit more here. Sorry, let me, there we go. Okay, thank you, Georgiana. Oh, that's very sweet of you guys. Um, can you use, what did you say, Virginia? 
Uh, can you use industrial machine on cotton? It depends on your industrial machine. Mine, you can, because mine is kind of a lighter, a lighter industrial, and it can sew through all different kinds of uh, fabric and material. So it depends on your machine. Okay, and then you're gonna just flatten that seam and stitch down both sides on both sides of that seam. And I just flatten it as I go with my fingers underneath. And I am using Tech 70 thread. It's bonded poly and it's actually the thread I sell on my website. It's the new color beige that I got in and I really, really like it. And I think I have a size 18 needle in right now. And my machine is a King Max. Just to get those questions out of the way. <laughs> Commonly asked. Okay, and then just go down the other side. And we'll do that on both pieces. Can you use text 90 on a domestic? No, I don't believe you can. You can't really use text 70 very well on a domestic either. That's the top or that's the front panel and then I'll do the next panel here. Beverly, hello, you made it. You made it, you made it. See? Maybe when I do it at night, everybody's in bed and they can sit and chat, right? <laughs> Might be easier sometimes for some people. And I do, when I'm over here, like changing something, it's, I'm usually changing my stitch length. I make it a little shorter when I'm sewing the panels together and longer when I'm top stitching. That's what I'm messing with on the right over here. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Danette. Linda, yes, my machine is nice and quiet. I really like my machine. Hi, Tina. Oh, there's my sister, Susan. Guess what? It's Susan's birthday today. Everybody wish Susan a happy birthday. It is the best day of the year, the day my sister was born. <laughs> Happy birthday, Susan. This is like the first birthday she's had in a while where I haven't been with her. It's kind of sad. Usually we visit each other for our birthdays. Our husbands know that's the best present. Right, Susan? Oh, there's my baby boy too. Curious Oreo, that's my son, Sebastian. Hi, Sebby. It's a family event. <laughs> Hi, Dalva. Yay. All right, so we have our front and back panels here. All sewn up. Okay, I'm gonna stick those to the side. Um, let's see. And then you want, oh, just kidding. I'm not going to stick those to the side. I'm going to put my phone on them real quick. Let's put our foam on. Again, this is the first time I've made this. So hi, Stephanie. Teresa, you're right. Susan does need to come for a visit. I even have a guest room now and we call it the Susan room. And I made it all cute and pretty for her. And she hasn't come to stay in it yet because she's been a little busy, but that's okay. Don't do that. Hmm. My machine's making a weird clicking noise. This thing is caught. Oh, I hate it when that happens. 
I cut my foam a little bit bigger because I wasn't sure how big my panels were gonna be yet. Um, this is really wide, but these are gonna turn into the sides, so there's no like side pieces, if you know what I mean. There's just a front and back panel to it. So it'll be smaller than this once you put everything together. And you want to make sure on this part that you're doing a nice big um, basting stitch. And you'll see why. We're going to take out the bottom part of this in a little bit for how she has it done. So just make sure your basting stitch is nice and big. Um, do I use a cer certain uh, thickness of foam? I use um, a thin, it's pretty thin foam. It's called Basel in our foam. I get it off of Amazon and I really like it. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty thin and I like it a lot. Um, my machine only sews straight. It does not do zigzag. All right, so do your second one here. Hi, Dad. My dad's on here too now, guys. <laughs> they say hi to Dad. <laughs> All right. Look at you want to see what's making that. I don't know if you can hear that clicking noise. Watch my little lever right here. It like gets stuck sometimes. Do you see how it's moving? It's not supposed to do that. It only happens sometimes. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> could you substitute foam for Decaville Light? Um, you probably could. I've just, I mean, on most bags, you can substitute the Decaville Light and the foam for each other, no problem. I've never made this bag before, so I'm just kind of going off of what the instructions say this first time around. But like I've made the everyday tote and other big totes with Decaville Light and I really like it. Oh man, I don't know how to make that stop either. It eventually does. Something gets stuck. Okay. So there, now are my two front and back pieces. And now we put those aside. And we're gonna work on those cute front panels. All right, so I'm gonna put that aside. And I've already got my base done. That's what's next. I've already got my base all made and my feet on. I did a layer of Decaville Heavy out of the seam allowances and um, foam on top. So she does it a different way in the pattern and I don't think, I don't know if it matters. I'm on an industrial, so I'm not worried about my thickness. But if you're worried about your thickness, do it how she has in the pattern. I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's get started on the rest here. I already did my straps. And I did them the wrong way because <laughs> I was trying to hurry and get prepped for this. So for this pattern, you I'm doing a double-sided strap. So it's a two-inch wide cut, folded your raw edges in, and then you just put them together, right? Raw edges um, on the inside. And then first you want to sew at that fourth-inch seam allowance down the strap because when you sew it onto your bag, you're sewing at that eighth. I accidentally just put them together at that eighth inch seam allowance because I'm so used to that, doing my straps like that. And I realized after the fact that that was the wrong way. So that's okay. It's fine. I'm not gonna redo my straps. We're just gonna make it work. <laughs> okay? All right. We don't do this part next. We gotta put on our straps first. All right, so get your big piece here. And we need to mark. 
Um, those are rivet feet that I sell on my website. And they're amazing. I don't know where my chalk pin is. Let's see here. I think my chalk pin is over at my other table. Just a minute. Found it. Okay. Here we go. So you want to measure from your bottom one and a half. Now, I don't give away too many measurements and placings and inches on these patterns, but like this, I will. I try really hard to make it so you have to buy the pattern. I don't want you to be able to make the bag from my video. Please go buy the pattern. Um, Jesse, rivet feet don't have to be put on with a press, but it makes it super easy to do it with a press. You can do it with um, a hammer and like rivet tools. Okay, so we're going to place our handle on this side. And I am just going to put some tape on it so it stays in place. And I'm going to do it with my printed side up, my floral side up, okay? Okay, and then you want to mark on this side, you know, my different marking tools. Gosh, they've all disappeared. Okay. So you want to mark up the strap to nine and a half. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for tuning in. I got to find my other marking pin real quick. This isn't going to work. Sorry about that, guys. Huh. It's gone. My error. So lime pen. I can't find it. Shoot. Okay. Well, that's okay, guys. We'll make it work. I am going to use this pin because this erases. All right, let's try that again. This erases with water. Nine and a half. And nine and a half. Okay, sorry about that, but the joys of lives. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Marley probably did steal it. She steals anything that she can find. <laughs> All right, so we want to put this in three inches here, and then we're going to stick that down alongside that ruler, and we're going to sew it up to that nine and a half mark that we made, okay? Which is pretty high all the way up to there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my other side on. Make sure your handle isn't twisted. Oh, Mary, you're so welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay. Go ahead and sew up and over on that line we made on both handles. All right. Oh, see, it's not clicking now. Ah, oh, thank goodness.
and then come back down. I don't know your name if your username is not the same as your first name, but G K G Car EQ. I'm so happy. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so I sewed the first one on. Let's sew the second one on. So many different people here from different places. It's pretty awesome. I am in Parker, Colorado, for those of you who don't know. Judy, could it? I have no idea what that means. It's just like my little reverse thing that makes that clicking noise. It gets stuck down and it makes, and it goes up and down and clicks. It doesn't do it enough for me to be concerned just every once in a while. It already stopped, so I don't know. Okay, so that's your first set of handle on there. And then we're gonna do the second side here. How did I decide on a King Max, Linda? I went to an actual um, storefront and got to test out the different machines. And I was choosing between this and the Juki 1181N. And I got to sit down and sew on both of them and test them both out. And when it came down to it, it felt like the exact same machine and this one was cheaper. So I went with this one and I love it. It's a great machine. I don't know if I would have done anything differently. Awesome, Linda, you used to live in Parker. That's super cool. Hi, Patty. From Canada. You know what, this light is making it go really weird, isn't it? I'm gonna turn this light off. Let me know if that's better. Oh, <laughs> I'm just going all up here on the handle. <laughs> all right, there we go. All right, three inches in. Let me know if the lighting's okay, guys. Agent Space Girl, I like your name. From Cambridge. <laughs> My puppy is doing fabulous. She's the best puppy dog ever. I love her so much. <laughs> yeah, she's sleeping on the couch. Hey, Daniel, can you come down real, real quick for me? All right, just like that, and then we'll sew that on. Marley May is the dog. She's a doll. Um, yeah, my model number for my King Max is GC0302. Oh, shoot, go through the bathroom. Can you move that closer? This light? Yeah. That other one just makes it too funky. Hi, Mommy. Nope, that's great, thank you. Hi, baby. Oh, gosh, see, I'm getting distracted. I forgot to mark how far up I'm going, guys. 
<laughs> Denise, yay, you did. All right. <laughs> See if you can find my pen, Daniel. It's long gone. I don't know what happened to it. I needed a new one anyway, so I'll have to remember to get a new one. What time is it here? It's 824, Betty, at night. Just about bedtime. It's like the quietest time in my house. So I thought it was a good time to do a live. <laughs> oh, you think it's my top? That's throwing off the color? Let me take off my sweatshirt. <laughs> go. We'll try that. Okay. So there is my second panel. Yay. Sorry if it's really late for some of you. It's hard finding um, good times for everybody. Adelaide Leo. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much. All right. Now it's time for our front pieces like I thought before. So let's get those out. And I have mine all clip together here to kind of, just to make it easier for me <laughs> as I'm doing this live. You should have um, four of these bottom pieces and four of these top accent pieces, and they're gonna be mirrored. So two of each way, okay, on both of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew those at a 3 8 seam allowance. So this part is just like the tote, the Harlequin, or not the tote, the Harlequin pouch and those front panels. This is the same exact process as those now, except bigger, okay? So we go like that, and then we're gonna press it open and top stitch. Did I sew both straps on that second side? Oh, um, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Cindy, I'm all, what? <laughs> I didn't. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, thanks for looking out for me. Uh, let's do this. Cindy, you get five points. Amy, do I do custom bags for people? Yes. Not as often as I used to because I'm a little bit busier than I used to be, but I still do customs every once in a while. All right, Cindy saved my butt. Now they're all sewn on. Right, right. <laughs> Thanks for catching that. <laughs> okay, on to what I was saying. We're going to top stitch this, okay? Down each side and I just flatten it as I go. Because usually I don't have a material that I can iron for this part. So I just take it with my finger underneath and I flatten it right there as I go. And then I just go down the other side, all in one thing. All right, well good, I'm glad some people like this time, that's awesome. We got a good group watching, so I feel okay. So that's what it looks like. See, it's just much bigger than the pouch, but it's the same idea. So now we do this three more times. 
The dark material is a faux mora um, leather from Emmeline Bags. And I love, love, love their mora faux leather. It's so soft and such good material. It makes beautiful, beautiful bags. I'm just gonna go ahead and sew all the rest of them real quick together. See, if you have them all clipped and ready to go, it makes this part a little bit easier and quicker. This is how I usually do stuff like this. I'm sewing on my own. Okay. Alright. Here we go. There you go, Maura. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, it is awesome stuff. The floral canvas is from Hawthorne Threads. I'm not sure which line it is. I can link that later. I forget. Maybe it's Indie Bloom. I really like the Indie Bloom stuff. I use that a lot. Um, and it's the cotton canvas. They have that back in stock now, which is fabulous. Number two, I need to check my bobbin real quick. Oh, see, look at that, it's all, there we go. I could feel it. Um, do I choose the fabric first or the pattern first? I usually choose the pattern first. Every once in a while I find a fabric that I know which bag I'm gonna use it for, but usually I choose the fabric or the pattern first and then go and figure out the fabric. I kind of knew I wanted to use this combination on this bag though. I had it kind of pictured in my head. So I'm excited about it. Perfect for spring. Last one. Hi, Joyce. <laughs> Leah. Yeah, this is better than sleeping, right? Sometimes. All right. all four pieces. Yay. Next we need to combine them. So you're going to take this. Let me scroll down here. Okay, just like that. And we're going to want to piece those together. And the most important part, if you sewn the patch, you understand is to match this part up right here, okay? That's your most important part to match up. 
Um, what top stitch length I'm using? A little bit more than a five, but I understand that all machines are different on their lengths and what their numbers mean. So mine might be different than yours. I'm not sure. Hmm. That's weird. I think it'll be all right though. Okay, so three eighths inch. My panels are a little off, but I think it'll be okay. I think we'll be able to even it out. Surprise snow. Ugh, I don't know. Surprise snow this time of year isn't very fun. <laughs> All right, so flatten that seam out just like we did. Yep, and my middle seam looks good. So flatten that out and top stitch down each side. And again, I'm just flatting, flattening it underneath as I go. Yeah, Kathleen was one of my winners today in my giveaway. Super awesome. Congratulations, Kathleen. The giveaway's been really fun. You guys might be sick of me at the end of this week with all the lives I have to do. <laughs> all right. So that's what that should look like. Okay. And do that to the same thing to the next one. Um, yeah, I do. It's kind of faded, my 3 8 mark right here, um, Judy, but I can see it. But yeah, I have to mark it. It doesn't come with it. It has the fourth, the half, the three-fourths, and the one, but that's it. This one matches up better. All right. Oh, Georgiana, that sounds horrible. I'm so over the cold. Amy, yeah, I uh, used to mark mine with tape, but then I got this plate and now I just mark it with a Sharpie. <laughs> that tape would constantly come off and it drove me nuts. Just a minute. No, no, no. Um, I missed one. Agent Space Girl. I like your um, YouTube name. <laughs> How did I learn to sew? I learned to sew at a young age from my mom on just a regular machine. Just all the basics. And then when I got older, I just kind of started playing around with it more and just taught myself, I guess, and books and later on YouTube, which is what made me want to do it. I wanted to teach people what I have learned. Hi, Tracy, thanks for coming. two panels. You have one on the front and one on the back. Okay. Just like this. Was my mom a sewist? <laughs> yes. My mom is a quilter. My mom's an amazing quilter. Yeah. Okay. So... So 
sorry, I am just reading here. All right, so now we just sew these together. Just like a pocket, like a slip pocket, okay? Same exact thing as a slip pocket. And this is gonna be shorter. Hopefully that's right. I think it is from the pictures. This um, pocket is gonna be shorter than your front panel piece. Okay. Um, I interfaced the cotton canvas with woven fuse too. Yes. I don't know if you have to, but I sure like the feel of it, so I did. I need to clear out some of this. I keep knocking everything as I sew, just a second. Valerie, oh, thank you so much. That's sweet of you. I like my hair too. All right, so three eighths. And just be careful around that little corner area there in the center. About right there. Just like that. And she shows that you should clip right here. Okay, and my scissors are getting dull. It's just gonna help with it fold over. I'm just trying to be careful not to get my actual seam there. All right, I'm just gonna do like that. I'm gonna trim this down just a touch as well. Okay. Yes, it's from Hawthorne, Jolyn. All right, and then fold it over. Oh, that's a good, uh, I didn't see that in the pattern. She says, so with the lining side down or up, when you um, are doing connecting these two pieces so you can see where to pivot. <laughs> that is that is really smart. I'll do that on the second one. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm trying to read the pattern and do this as I do the live, so I miss things sometimes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch that. Just like that. I'm loving it already. Oh, that's cute. Look at that. I like it. Hi, Sonia. <laughs> All right, it was in her video, awesome. Yes, this um, designer did a video on this bag as well. So if mine doesn't cut it for you, go check hers out. I just knew I really wanted to sew this bag and she was so sweet and said I could do it. 
All right, so this time, let's see. Well, does it matter? Lining side up. Oh, I see. If we mark it. Flip over the panels with overlay. Uh, all right, let's do it. You could also mark your three eighths there. I think that's what she does too. different pair of scissors maybe something's thicker all right so same thing put that little centerpiece out it really helps it when you flip it over all right I'm gonna trim this down just a tiny bit hi sweet passionate tea <laughs> How's it going? Ugh. All right. You could totally take this to an iron too. I just don't have one heated up by me right now, so I'm not going to. And when you put woven fuse on this canvas, well, when you put woven fuse too on anything, it creases pretty dang good. It's kind of nice. Oh, thank you. Buhe. Sorry if I say that name wrong. All right. We all know by now names are not my strong suit. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's top stitch that. close okay well that's good <laughs> so that is the other side so I think next we put them on yep all right so we're gonna measure or we are gonna put this on but we're not gonna sew it on yet I'm more just placing it first I wanna make sure that these seams right here measure up and that that is centered, okay? Because that would be an eyesore. And then I'm going to just clip in place up here. And then I'm gonna do the same. Yes, this brown goes with so much, Dalva. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so that's where I'm gonna have it. 
And I read this over before, so let's see if I can get it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up this piece, just this piece, okay? And I'm gonna clip that out of the way here. All right. So I want to sew across this bottom here, this bottom piece, using a 3 8 seam allowance from this piece. All right, so that's tacking that pocket down, which I'm gonna have to mark because that's hard to do that 3 8 without a mark. So let me do that real quick. All right. Okay, here we go. So that's encasing our raw handles. That's it, you're gonna, gonna close up this pocket. This is gonna do a couple of things. And then the next step she has you do, I'm pretty sure one of the reasons is to keep um, bulk out of your seam allowances. All right, so what I'm gonna do, sorry, just a minute. The bottom center seam and the outer pieces. I'm going to remove these basting stitches here. I am gonna clip the center of my foam right here too so I know where my center is. So you wanna take out these, so the reason why I said make sure your basting stitches are nice and big, here's why. Okay, we're taking out these basting stitches from your foam. Again, I don't know if there's a better way to do this. I am trying to follow the instructions on the pattern and this is how she's having you do it. So let's just do it, okay? <laughs> I feel like it's so quiet in here. All right. I am not a fast seam ripper, sorry. I'll try my hardest. Um, yes, I'm pretty sure this is domestic machine friendly and this is why we're doing this part. It's taking some of the bulk out of our seams. I'm almost 100% this is a domestic machine friendly pattern. I think a lot of that depends on what fabrics you choose to use as well. You know, don't choose really thick, crazy fabrics if you have a domestic. This uh, Mora faux leather, faux leather is actually kind of a thinner more pliable material, and that's another reason why I really like it. Yeah, there you go, Angelina. Thank you. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're cutting this piece off. Okay, our main panel piece, we're cutting it right up to this line where we sewed the pocket down, okay? We're not cutting the foam. Don't cut the foam out. We're just cutting our main panel piece. Move you back just a little bit so you can see. See, cut that off. And then you wanna bring this back down. Just like that. Okay, so now 
we want to separate our, our pocket here, okay? So now that we have that clipped back onto the foam, what we're going to do, because this is a really big thing, we wanna stitch up and back down these two pockets and it's gonna make two separate pockets, okay? So on the middle seam and try and keep it as best you can along there. All right, here we go. And the most important part is keeping this seam right here in line with each other. All right, so make sure as you're going, that is staying in line because you don't want those two to be off. if I'm missing questions. Yes, SF101 is the same as woven view. So now I separated it into two pockets. See that? And now kind of smooth out everything here and make sure it's all in line and we're going to baste it all down. Okay. There we go. Oh my gosh, this is really cute, guys. All right. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to put my nameplate right here real quick. Let's see. Yeah, if you're afraid... Okay, if you are afraid of top stitching over these marks that you already did... I mean, you could try to not top stitch that down at first, but it just might not lay as nicely if you don't do that um, when you put it all on. Yes, I use Basel. I get it off of Amazon. All right, I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this whole thing in one sitting, guys. I may have to do a continuation tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to go right there. down there. Um, I'm not sure, Roxanne, I think it's thinner than soft and stable from what I've heard. Um, I think they're both great foams to use. So it's probably just preference. I just really like this one. So I've just always used it. All right. Panel number one. I love it. I think um, maybe a rivet right there and right there. I'm going to do that real quick because I feel like that would be cute. 
don't you think? And then I think you could even, oh, maybe do a rivet right there. I don't know. Did it go through? Almost. Hi, Nicole. Don't worry about it. It's going to be a long party tonight. <laughs> Let me get some... Rivets real quick. My press. I don't think this part's on the pattern, but I'm just choosing to put a couple of rivets there because I love rivets. This is called a Japanese hole punch. And you can buy them off of Amazon. And I kind of love it. I have a couple of them now. They aren't the smoothest thing, but man, it's awesome. It punches through anything. And you can do it anywhere on your bag, which is nice. Yes, this lining is gonna have a ton of pockets. Okay, now I'm satisfied. There we go. How about that for our front? All right, go ahead and grab your other panel and repeat. Nicole, I think you need it. I agree. It's a it's a great tool. For sure. All right, here we go again. You know what, I'm going to undo this part first, just to make my life easier. <laughs> I know I have to do this. I think I can sew the bag up without doing this with my machine, but I'm just showing you this in case you're on a domestic. You definitely will want to do this part. Okay. There we go. So you want to line this up first. I'm just going to clip it here so I know that's where I want it. And there. And there. There. Okay, flip that up. Um, Patsy, I'm not sure if you can buy replacements or not for the Japanese punch tool. That's a great question. I have one that's getting dull too. I haven't looked into that yet. That's why I bought a second one. <laughs> I just went ahead and bought a second one because they're pretty cheap. So I just, I don't know, I figured I could use two. All right. I don't know if it's getting dull as much as you need to clean it. And I actually cleaned mine with an alcohol wipe and got all the sticky stuff off of it. And that helped a lot.
Yeah, Cindy, um, that's what somebody else says, and you probably could. You just got to make sure you get it to lie flat. And I'm not sure, maybe I did this wrong in the pattern, but I'm pretty sure it had you top stitch, unfold. Um, let me double check and see if I did that right or not. You know what? She doesn't have you, I've never made this pattern before, so I didn't know I would have to top stitch it again. So you're not supposed to top stitch it the first time. So wait to top stitch it right here. But guys, it's fine. <laughs> It'll still work. So wait to top stitch this part. Lesson learned, right? That's why I do this for you, so you can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> All right, here we go. So put that back down, and you're going to want to line it all up. That's right, Judy. It's fine. We'll make it work. All right, so if you haven't sewn this before, wait to top stitch this part till right now. But because I already top stitched it, I'm just going over my stitches again, whatever. Not ideal, but that's okay. It's my first one. I will know better for next time. I don't think it looks bad the way I did it. I think it looks fine. Again, not ideal, but I stayed right on my line, so you can't really tell that much. Okay, now I will baste it. I'm gonna put those rivets in real quick. And then I think we'll go to the lining. How's everybody doing? You hear the toilet flushing upstairs for me? <laughs> it's really loud for me. I don't know if it's loud for you. <laughs> Gotta love basement sewing rooms. You can hear everything that goes on in your house. All right. Nope, the rivets won't hurt the pocket area at all. It's above the pocket area. I'm putting the rivets 
on the strap connectors here, just to give them a little extra support. Your pockets are right there. Do you see that? So it should be just fine. Okay, good, you can't hear. <laughs> Hi, Carol, thanks for joining. All right, so that is our back panel. Ooh, guys, that is so cool, I like it a lot. All right, let me look real quick at what is next. Our lining, okay, let me grab my lining pieces over here. I'm doing this crazy bright color. Do I use other presser feet on my machine? Mm, you know, I bought other presser feet. I do not use them that often, no. I have the zipper, a zipper foot and a hemming or a, I don't know, some other type of foot. But I just use this walking foot it came with for the most part. So, where did I get the press? I got the press on Amazon. It is nothing fancy. It's, um, I can post the link for that too. So, for your, you want to be sure that they are wider than they are tall. Okay, check. And we want to cut out these center pieces real quick. I mean, not center. <laughs> these edge pieces, two inch squares, because you're doing a boxed bottom for your lining. I'll do that real quick. I'll do that one. Deborah, oh good, yay, I know you'll love it. That's funny, the joys of Amazon. I don't know how many packages a day I get from Amazon of such random things. <laughs> and I just forget what I ordered. I'm like, I don't remember what I just ordered two days ago. <laughs> Anybody else have that issue, just me, no? All right. Cut out your corners. Hi, Brianne, welcome. California, love California. Oh, I have a Hawthorne, sh Hawthorne shopping addiction as well. I got a package today on the porch and my daughter went and got it and she said, what did you order? And I honestly had no clue whatsoever. And I opened it and they were little um, circle clear stickers for shipping. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I got my corners cut out. Now, I am not doing both the zipper pockets. The way she has the pattern is super cool. She does a small zipper pocket and a bigger zipper pocket below it. I'm just doing the big zipper pocket. Um, because this is alive and I don't have a ton of time. So we're just going to do a zipper pocket. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I could get leaks from Amazon. I can get affiliate links from Amazon. I just have not gotten on to like officially do that because I give so many Amazon links to people. It's crazy. So I really should do that. I'm just marking my center. <laughs> yeah, I, Justina, I do too. <laughs> Let's see, I'm not sure how far down I'm gonna put this, just a minute. Since I'm only doing one pocket, I'm gonna do it about three inches down. All right. 
Oh no, I got a thumbs down. That's sad. The pattern says she's sold out. Isn't it a PDF? Hmm. All right. I think next time I would do a bigger pocket too. This seems a little um, on the small side for um, as just if I, because I'm only having one main zipper pocket, next time I think I would make it bigger. But it's probably good if you're doing the two zipper pockets. It's probably the perfect size. All right. So just do sew around that rectangle. I always shorten my stitch length for that. Um, maybe I got a thumbs down because um, I talked about Amazon too much. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, guys. It's fine. <laughs> Hater's gonna hate. Jennifer, yes, you caught me live. Welcome. If there's an issue purchasing the pattern, I'll, uh, I don't know why there would be, but maybe there's an issue on Etsy right now. I'll let the, I'll let Leanne know, the designer. I know she's in the UK, so she might be in bed right now. So it may be a while before she can update it. Oh, thanks, Sarah. <laughs> okay. What are some tips to keep these zipper squares clean, not crinkly? You're talking about like these when you fold it. There's lots of different theories. Um, a lot of, some of the designers like to do just two straight lines and they don't do these side ones. And when you cut the Y there, you cut it the same way and they feel like it makes it lay flatter. I personally have not been able to tell a difference between the two methods. So I do the whole rectangle um, and just try and get as close to these you know uh, stitches as you can when you're cutting it and I think it takes practice too oh guys I gotta change my blade real quick sorry just a second Trina, that's right. I'm fine. It's okay. Thanks, Delaney. Thank you. Um, this is another one of my favorite tools. It's the Fisker Soft Grip tool. Amazon again. And I found these awesome, this is a hundred pack blade refill on Amazon for it. It's perfect. Um, this waterproof canvas is from fabric.com. They have this awesome coral color and I could not pass it up. I love it so much. I've made like my last two or three bags with it, I think. Yeah, Nicole, that huge pack is from um, Amazon. I'm almost positive. Oh, Delaney, I'm not, I didn't say your name right. I'm so sorry. Delay, oh, I'm sorry, I tried. Some people will make one stitch diagonal at the corner of the zipper window, yeah. There's a few different. Press the seams before turning it. See, there's all these good little tips. Um, I love waterproof canvas, I think it's fabulous. I prefer to use it. Yeah, that Fisker's tool is seriously one of the best tools ever, especially if you do lots of zipper pockets and stuff like that. It is amazing. Okay, there we go. I'm just giving it a good press with my fingers. 
Um, I can't link on here that I know of, but I can put it in the comments or in the description after the video is done. But it is called Fisker's Soft Grip Tool. You can look it up on Amazon. That's exactly what it's called. No, Fisker's Soft Blade. Yeah, tool. Who wrote this? It's um, Crafted by Leanne. Crafted by Leanne. And she is super, super cute. And I like her a lot. <laughs> Claire it, so am I. So am I. All right. Sorry if my face is in the shot, guys. Just trying to line that up there. I take off the bottom first. And then I take off the top tape. Um, crafted by Leanne. She's got some cute patterns. There was another one that I was eyeballing to do. I think it's called the Star Starlight Satchel. I could be wrong on that name. Um, but she's got a couple of really cute stuff. There you go. So Modern Bags has her pattern too. Maybe I'll link that one um, as well. <laughs> Nicole, are you removing comments? <laughs> okay. There's like no eloquent way, eloquent way to do that. Am I saying that word right? There we go. Okay. I'm going to sew around that. And we are leaving the bottom of this zipper open when we sew it up. Just FYI, what time is it? Hi, Kira. Thanks for joining. Jennifer, I'm so sorry. I posted the con, I'm doing a giveaway and I posted it on my live last week on YouTube. And there was a week to sign up and I had to shut off the drawings to get it all organized and make sure everybody was legit. So I'm sorry if you missed the sign up for this giveaway, but I am almost positive there will be more fun giveaways. Okay, so that's the front, that's the back. I'm gonna put the back piece on. Okay, Benjamin, I, I guess you need to go to Sew Modern Bags, guys. The Etsy one isn't working, but you can purchase the pattern off the Sew Modern Bags website, which is the same place you can get her pouch for this, um, which I think I have linked in the live video I did on the pouch. Oh, thank you, Cindy. It's called the Fisker Soft Grip Craft Knife. Perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna sew up the sides and the top of this, but I'm not gonna close it up. Oh, thanks, Jennifer. Thanks for understanding. I feel bad that not everybody got a chance to sign up. I thought I gave everybody enough time and notice, but. All 
All right, I'm gonna leave the bottom open like that. And we'll go to the other side for the slip pocket. Ooh, we're getting close, guys. All right, I changed up the slip pocket. I'm just doing one big one. And instead of making it two separate pieces, I just did one piece and I'm just folding it right sides together. And I'm gonna sew around it and leave an opening in the bottom. You're starting to like zipper facings? That's good. <laughs> I am too. I didn't really love them at first, but I've done the zipper facing so much that I like the way they look. I did not do a zipper facing on that one, but that's okay. Leave a hole. Whoops. Just gonna trim that down a little bit and then I'm gonna turn it. You don't wanna trim where you have to close up the hole though because then that makes it a little difficult. You just got three free patterns on So Modern Bags. Awesome. Very cool. All right. I'm sorry for those of you who missed the giveaway. Just spread the word about my channel and then we'll get to 20 and then I'll do another one. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. I really like this print, it's super pretty. I think it comes in a bunch of different colorways too, off of Hawthorn. All right, poke your corners out really good. Yes, this is canvas. This is a cotton canvas. Again, you could take this to an iron. I don't have mine plugged in. I totally forgot. And that's okay. This canvas with the woven just, it creases so nicely. I'm just gonna clip my Bottom shut there. I'm gonna roll my seams. Um, yes, Dalva, I had a ton of entries for the giveaway. I did, I thought I got the word out enough. I guess I did not. This is Hawthorne Threads, Jennifer. All right, so you want to top stitch the top of this pocket here. Um, what ounce of real leather? I have done a little bit of everything. My favorite is the really light stuff, like the, I'm not great. Anything less than a three ounces is my favorite. Um, one to two, I think is the, the best. Like, and the sheepskin. Leather is really nice to sew with. Bomber jacket leather from Uncle George's Discount Leather on Facebook is probably my favorite. Okay. 
gonna need a sugar daddy for your sewing supplies. Jennifer, I like you. <laughs> All right, I'm just doing this so I can find my middles. I could also just crease it probably. All right, so I am going to place this pocket on and I'm actually going to mark my middle because I'm going to split it into two. So about five. Right there. Straight. Okay. And I, let's see, I did the other one three inches down. I'm going to do the same. Right there. And now I can't see my center. I need to mark it. are funny um new marking pen because I can't find my other one <laughs> I can't find my favorite pen so I'm just using this other one that I have all right there we go I was trying to do it quick and easy and that rarely works takes time to mark it out all right so I'm gonna sew this and split it up all in one thing The right side of the canvas um, has like a texture to it. And that wrong side is smooth and shiny. That's how you know. Um, could you use a double-sided si tape to keep the pocket in place? You can. Just make sure that your needle or your tape doesn't gum up your needle and make your stitching all wonky. All right. There is my slip pocket. Yay. All right, I think we have all of our pieces assembled and now we gotta put them all together. So let's see what we need to do first. We need to put the zipper onto our main bag pieces. Let's do that. Here we go. And I've got my zipper already done here. Come here, zipper. It's caught. I, she has you just folding it on the bag and sewing it, but I just turned mine at that 90 degree angle and tacked it down. I just feel like that's gonna be easier for me to do. So that's what I did. All right. You want to mark one inch in, and that is going to be your stopping and starting and stopping point. Left side. Okay. 
Oh, sorry, on the raw inside. So on this side, it's one. And on this side, it's one and a half. Right? Sorry, just a minute, I'm reading. Yeah. One and a half there. Okay, that's where we wanna start it. I really like antique, antique brass hardware. You know what? I guess I do. <laughs> I tend to use it quite a bit. It just goes with this so well. Thank you, Sonia. All right, so we're gonna do this. Yep, all right, so we're gonna baste this on first. And this is the kind that we are going to pull your zipper down and out of the way at that mark that we made at one inch, okay? So I'm just gonna unzip the whole thing. No, I got this fabric at fabric.com, or the, not the fabric, the uh, waterproof canvas at fabric.com. And she just has you pulling it out of the way at that mark. So when I get to that end mark there, I'm just pulling it down out of the way as I sew, okay? So baste that part on first. Yes, I do think this could be altered to have a zipper panel if you wanted to, um, no problem. 100% you could. All right. There we go. Put your lining on top and we're gonna sew that on. I never thought I would like this antique brass hardware um, as much as I do. I really think it goes with so much. It's probably my favorite and it's probably my least popular um, finish of hardware to be sold too. It's crazy. All right, remember to pull that zipper out of the way right there. All right, and then we go to the next side. Yep, all right, so you wanna turn it around and we're gonna do the same thing to the other two pieces. Angelina had to put the kids to bed, now it's party time, right? <laughs> Um, can you say one more time, what is the fabric you're using for this bag? Um, yep, yeah, this, this is waterproof canvas from fabric.com. This is, I think it's indie, a uh, line of indie bloom from Hawthorne Threads. And this is Mora faux leather from Emmeline Bags. Does that help? G car, hopefully. All right, so this one I want to mark as well. One and a half on this side 
and one on this side. You're welcome. Ugh, these darn handles don't want to stay out of my way. Sorry, this isn't the easiest thing to do on camera. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. All right, line that first part up. And we're going to baste that onto the other side of our panel. And do the same exact th steps that we just did. Oh, thank you, Dalva. She posted a link for the Hawthorne threads, guys. Awesome. You will be addicted. I'm so sorry I introduced you to Hawthorne threads because now you won't be able to stop. <laughs> okay. Good night, Beverly. All right, so baste that on there first. and then clip your lining piece on. Oh my gosh, I've spent hours looking at Hawthorne threads before. Yes, I did one inch on this side. Um, Karen. Yep, I did one inch on the raw inside. Got it. zip this all up and make sure it looks okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yep, we're good. Just don't want to make any twists or anything in it. Okay, so that's what you have. I have my zipper added. I'm going to move this out a little bit for this part so you guys can have a better view of everything. All right, We need to get our base, base piece out here. And we're gonna do some markings on our base piece. We're gonna do a three eighths all the way around. And I already have my centers and my side centers marked on this. So I won't need to do that, but do that if you haven't. And again, I interfaced my bottom piece just a little bit differently because I know this is how I like my bottom pieces, but my machine can also handle it. So if yours can't, do it the way that she has. All right. Here we go. I 
All right, so we're going to start with our front exterior piece only. We are going to line it up with our center here and our center on the piece. I'm gonna clip there. And the reason we have these three eighths marks because that's where we're beginning and ending our stitching. If you've ever done these um, box bottoms like this, you'll kind of understand why that is. If not, then you will see. Okay. <laughs> so we are gonna sew along that 3 8 inch and we're gonna stop and start at that 3 8 inch mark there. All right. Let me just read and make sure I'm doing everything right. And again, I'm only sewing my exteriors right now. Yep. Okay. All right, and then stop at that three eighths. Thank you, Nellie. Oh, uh, well, Karen, I think it'll work either way. I don't think it matters that much, actually. Okay, and then you wanna take it to the other side and do the same thing. Again, I'm just clipping it to my exterior, not my lining. My lining is out of the way. It said, it's morning in Sweden. Wow. <laughs> Good morning. All right. Remember to start at that three eighths. Okay. Sorry, just a second. Let me read and make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. So we've got that. And we want to do a little clip. Right here, where your seam begins and ends at that 3 8 marks, you want to make a little clip in your exterior piece. It does not have to be big. It'll just help everything lay nicer when you're all done and you box the sides. All right. On both sides. Doing it that way. Doing it there. All right. So next step. We want to pin the linings together. We're going to pin everything together. Yep. All right. Here we go. Well, not pin, but clip. So we're going to clip our exterior and our linings. So you kind of want to make sure everything lines up here on all of your front pocket seams. I feel like that's kind of important. All right. Just like that. The same with your other side. And 
And you usually want to flatten your seams right there. And right there. All the way down. Okay, and do the same for your lining. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that question. Yeah, thank you for answering that, guys. Sorry, I need to flatten this. Oh my goodness, come on. There we go. All right, almost done clipping. Sorry, it's a lot of clips. It's a big bag. It's a big bag. Okay, so now we are going to be sewing this all together. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to start at the 3 8 seam allowance on your exterior. You're going to increase to a 5 8 on your lining. When you get back up to the other side of your exterior, you go back to your three eighths. It's just so your lining can uh, fit in your bag better and it's not baggy. You don't want a baggy lining, okay? So, can you guys see okay? Yeah, I think so. Holler at me if you can't see good. Hi, Amber. Thanks for joining. Okay, again, I'm doing a three eighths right now. So if you're sewing on a domestic, this is where you would have wanted to keep your foam out of your seam allowances because it's pretty thick, okay? With your front slip pockets there and the foam, it's pretty thick. And I don't think I could sew that with a domestic with these materials. But if you kept it all out of your seam allowances and kept your materials a little bit lighter than I did, you'll be fine. All right, and I'm increasing. And I'm moving my table out. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna continue, and we want to leave. I don't think we want to sew the bottom at all. Do not sew. Do not sew your bottom, guys. Don't sew the bottom at all. Closing that up through the pocket. I'm almost positive. So go on the other side and remember to do that 5 8 seam allowance there. But then go back to your 3 8 Thank you, Nelly. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like this swell crossbody one. That one turned out cute, I think. All right, now go back up to your three eighths. All right. That is one big bag, guys. It looks awesome. Okay, so it says draw, oh gosh, 
Sorry, this is so small. I can't see some of the writing. Three-fourths line across the bottom. Let's do that. Jennifer, how long I've been, have I been sewing? Uh, I would say 10 plus years. All right. Now we want to box and finish up our outer corner, or our exteriors. So we're going to match our centers up. We, we marked it earlier there. It's so hard for me to get the right camera angle sometimes. I want you guys to see. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna flatten this seam and I am going to match that center seam up with the center on my bottom exterior piece. And we are going to sew that together. And it kind of flattens out nicely because we did that little clip just like that. All right, so sew that up. Not the easiest um, thing to do, but don't be afraid to squish your bag down. All right, and that 3 8 inch. Yeah, sometimes YouTube doesn't um, let you put links in the comments, guys. So if you're trying to put them like in the live comments, it may not show up. But if you put them in the actual comments after the video, I can see them and approve them. And then it'll let you post it. So do the same thing on the other side. They just don't want people to be posting crazy links to crazy stuff while you're doing a live sew or a live video, which is probably a good thing. Okay. I'm going to trim that up a little bit so it's not so bulky there. And on this side, I'm almost done, guys. I'm almost done. This is a long life. Sorry, I really wanted to get this tote done, though, for everybody. All right, so we're going to turn this through. Here we go. I wish I could speed this part up, but I can't. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, Karen, I am very glad that bottom was open because that was a lot easier than pulling through a zipper pocket. I'll tell you what. Look at that. sure my bottom looks okay before we sew this all up. Okay. Look at that. Woo! 
All right, so now we're going to close up our um, bottom lining through the zipper. So you wanna pull this zipper pocket open here and you're going to grab your lining pieces and pull it through that zipper which with waterproof canvas can be a little tricky. Just be patient. Hi, Kim. Thank you. Oh, hello, Marina, Mariana from Kenya. Awesome. Super cool. All right. Look at that. Now we want to sew that up. All right. And we're going to sew it up on that line that we drew that three fourths inch line. Okay. And I think we were supposed to increase it to a 3 4 inch around the whole thing and not a 5 8 It was so little I couldn't read it. So, there's that. <laughs> okay, so let's sew this up. Is there a specific reason I use waterproof canvas? Um, a, I love the shape and feel it gives a bag. And B, I like that I don't have to interface it. Eight AM in Kenya, huh? That's awesome. All right, do I want to trim that? Hmm. I am gonna trim this seam allowance just a little bit. That's a big old seam allowance. All right, and now we want to box these corners. PP. I don't know your name, and I feel weird calling you PP. Um, PP, yes, this can be made on a domestic. Just make sure you use lighter materials and keep your foam and interfacing out of your seam allowance. <laughs> Deborah, I use, I'm using a size 18 needle, and I'm using Text 70 thread that I sell on my website. All right, so box those corners. Jennifer, yes, it is easy to keep clean. You can wipe it with a wet cloth and it's awesome. I love waterproof canvas. My favorite bags are made with this waterproof canvas. It just makes such a good sturdy bag. I love using it for the outside of bags too. I wish it came in more fun um, like prints and stuff, because I would use it way more for my outsides of my bags. You don't want to use vinyl for the inside of your bag. You want to use either this or a cotton. That's what I'm talking about. But yes, I do like to use it for the outside of my bags too. Oh, Jennifer, are you in Texas right now? Deborah, I need a thread tutorial too. <laughs> I am not very knowledgeable when it comes to threads except for what I like to use. I wish I knew more. Well, I don't know if I followed the directions 
exactly. This was my first time doing this pattern. I think it's still gonna be fine and turn out great. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. West Virginia, I'm so sorry. Um, is there any time I would ever interface waterproof canvas? Mm, maybe if I was using it for an outside and I really needed it to be shaped, I may use foam with it, but I don't think I've ever done that. All right, let's close up this pocket. Yes, the outside is Mora vinyl and floral canvas. Dalva, you are correct. You definitely don't want to interface waterproof canvas for your lining. You do not need that. Um, it is pretty heavy, waterproof canvas. It is not a light material. I'm not sure if a domestic can do it. I don't know, I've never, I don't know if I've ever sewn with waterproof canvas on a domestic. If anybody has, speak up. Oh, Helena Lee, I'm so sorry about your dad. I'm so happy to keep you company. That makes me happy. That's very sweet of you to share, thank you. All right, I'm just folding my raw edge in, guys. Again, <laughs> use an iron. I just forgot to plug mine in. Okay, we're gonna sew that up. And for sake of time, I am not gonna top stitch on this video because it's been, how long has this been? I don't even know, two hours? So it's time for me to be done, but um, that is the last step is top stitching. So let's get it all situated and we'll look at what we got. Oh, I ran out of bobbin. Of course I did. Gosh. Hold please. Oh good, the designer sews on a domestic, guys. And the designer is crafted by Leanne. And she has a video doing this bag and she sews on a domestic. So go check that out. Sorry, my bobbin is too, too wound. All right, let's try this pocket again, guys. Here we go, it like ran out the first stitch. Awesome. I gotta re-clip some of this there. All right. Um, the designer crafted by Leanne also has a Facebook group. So go check that out too and join and support. All right, you guys, let's just put this whole thing. Thank you, Deborah. Bagalicious. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna, the, the top is a top stitch, you top stitch it at the very end, but I just, for the sake of time, do not think I'm going to. Hawaii, awesome, I have never been to Hawaii. We have family that lives in Hawaii, but I have never been there. All right, let me see if I can zip this up. Again, I will top stitch, I'm just not gonna do it on the video for sake of time. I'm gonna move y'all out here. Hi guys. <laughs> oh, right. oh my gosh, I love it, I love it, I love it. I do need to put a zipper stop on it and I need to top stitch, but that's it. And when I top stitch that, oh guys, 
there is our tote. I'll put a zipper stop there. Look at that. How do you top stitch with a zipper? This opens all the way here, so you can open the bag all the way to top stitch. Look at this. You just go like that and you top stitch all the way around because you can flip this up out of your way and you top stitch around that, okay? Oh, guys, this is a cute pattern. I love, I love. All right, I hope that you guys had fun. I had so much fun. Thanks for joining me. Oh, there's the bottom. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Whew. How can I sew a bag in two hours? It's stressful, actually. <laughs> it's a little stress, which is why it's my first time doing the pattern. I may have not read the directions to the T. So um, make sure when you're sewing it, you're paying attention. And um, like with this top stitching part right here. But other than that, guys. That's a cute bag. Go get the pattern and, oh, where's my clutch? Look at this. <gasps> Yay. There we go. <laughs> I love it. All right. It's late. I'm going to go to bed. I hope you guys all have a good night, morning, whatever it is for you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Go check out the designer, Crafted by Leanne. Go buy the pattern. I will put all of the links and everything you need to know in the description after this video ends. And leave a comment. Let me know if you guys have any questions. This is the Harlequin pouch. I had a live on this as well. It matches this tote, and it is the cutest set I have ever seen. I love it so much. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining me.